So in example six, we're going to use the recurrence relation that we derived in example five to actually solve the differential equation. So um, remember, we, uh, we ended up with 2a2 minus 3a0 equals zero, and then we have this recurrence relation. So let me remind you that all of this is stuff we figured out back in example five. So if, you've, uh, if you took a break and you're just coming back, you might want to go back and check example five. That'll show you where these two formulas come from. Uh, they aren't supposed to be a big mystery, but we definitely aren't working them out right now. Um, what we're going to do with these is go ahead and solve for higher coefficients in terms of lower ones. Um, if we solve for this one up above, if we solve for a2, we get a2 is equal to 3a0 over 2 over, t over uh, 2. So we get a2 in terms of a0, and we get a n plus 2 in terms of a n, and that was for n being bigger than or equal to 1. That again was coming from example 5, so check back at example 5 if that's looking uh, mysterious to you. Um, what I'm going to do is give myself a new page because it's going to take us a little bit of work to figure out the, uh, the rest of this. Um, the recurrence relation, remember, is good for n being bigger than or equal to 1. So let's see what coefficients we can figure out. Uh, a0, there's nothing that has told me what A0 is, nothing in terms of lower coefficients, and the same with A1. So A0 and A1 are arbitrary. I don't know what they are. I'm just going to have to leave them as A0 and A1. But then for A2, I figured out on the previous slide that A2 is equal to 3A0 over 2. So that was from above. We worked that out. It was actually came from example 5. Um, so you can check back and see where that comes from. And now the recurrence relation is going to kick in. So I'm going to start out by plugging in different values of n, starting at n equals 1, because that was the first, uh, the first value for which my recurrence relation is valid. So when I plug in n equals 1 to the recurrence relation, plug in n equals 1 right there, I get a3 is equal to 3a1 over 3 which simplifies down just to a1. n equals 2 gives me a4 is equal to 3a2 over n plus 2 for, oops, that's not n sub 2, that's n equals 2. That's n equals 2. 3a2 over 4. Um, but a2 was 3a0 over 2, so that's 3 times 3, I'll write that as 3 squared, times a0 over 2 times 4. A, uh, from n equals 3, I get my a5 is going to be 3a3 over 5, which uh, in terms of a1 is 3a1 over 5. That's coming up from here, coming from up here, when uh, we figured out a3 in terms of a1 n equals 4 <coughs> is going to give me a6 is 3a4 over 6, which is 3 cubed a0 over 2 times 4 times 6. n equals 5 is going to give me a7 is 3a5 over 7 which is, in terms of a1, is 3 squared times a1 over 3 times 5. So we're going to assemble all these coefficients and build ourselves a couple of series solutions. So y, our original guess for the solution was the sum of a n x to the n, n starting at 0. So this is a0 plus a1 x plus a 2x squared plus a3x cubed plus a4x to the fourth, and so on. Um, a0, we, nothing we can do with that because it was arbitrary. a1x, nothing we can do with that. a2x squared, now our a2 was 3a0 over 2. 
our A3 was, where is that? That's uh, A1 x cubed. Our A4 was 3 squared, A0 over 2 times 4. Our A5 was 3A1. Oh, there was an x to the fourth there. Plus 3A1 over 3 times 5, x to the fifth. Plus 3 cubed, A0 over 2 times 4 times 6, x to the sixth. Plus 3 squared, A1, two, uh, 3 times 5 times 7, x to the seventh, and so on. Again, we can segregate out the A1, A0 terms and the A1 terms. A0, it looks like we've got 1 plus 3 halves x squared plus 3 squared over 2 times 4 x fourth plus 3 cubed over 2 times 4 times 6 x sixth. And A1 is x plus uh, x cubed, uh, I'm going to write that as 3 over 3 to make a pattern work better later, plus um, x fifth, the coefficient of x to the fifth is 3 over 3 times 5, um, the coefficient of x to the seventh is 3 squared over 3 times 5 times 7, and so on. That's our series for A1. And we can write a nice pattern for this. This is a0 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. It looks like I've got, uh, well, these even numbers. Remember that trick back from example 4. If you go back and look at example 4, there's a trick to write this as 2 to the n times n factorial. You can check that out um, in example 4. We went over that. And so what we have here is 3 to the n in the numerator, 2 to the n in the denominator, so that's 3 halves to the n times uh, x to the 2n. So I can actually write that as 3 halves times x squared to the n over n factorial. And then I don't have anything particularly good for my a1. I'm just going to write it in series form the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, or n equals 0 to infinity, of um, 3 to the n over 1 times 3 times 5 up to 2n plus 1. You could resolve this the same way we resolved it in example 4. I don't think it's really worth it at this point. Um, what is worth it is to notice that this series on the left is exactly like the series for e to the x. Remember that was x to the n over n factorial. And so what we have here on the left is a0 times e to the 3 halves x squared. And there's nothing really good happening on the right. I'm going to re rewrite my two constants as c1 and c2. So c1 e to the 3 halves x squared plus c2 times this horrible series n equals 0 to infinity of just 3 to the n over the odd powers, the odd numbers, 2n plus 1 x to the 2n plus 1. So there's nothing really good that happens with that series on the right. You could fill in some even powers and make a nice factorial, but you still wouldn't manage to convert it into an elementary function. So that's our solution for that one. Uh, let me recap how we derived that. We started out with this recurrence relation that we had from example 5. So there's uh, nothing new, th that there, there's no way you would have predicted that without having worked through example 5. Um, we also had um, this expression about a2 in terms of a0 from example 5. So that also came from previous work. Now, nothing here told us what a0 and a1 were, so we had to leave those arbitrary. But then we figured out a2 in terms of a0, and then plugging in the different values of n into this recurrence relation, n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, gave us the higher coefficients in terms of the lower ones. 
A3 came back to A1, A4 came back to A2, which comes back to A0, A5 down to A3 to A1, A6 down to A4, down to A0, and so on. So we got all these higher coefficients in terms of A0 and A1. So when we go back and look at our original series, our original guess, we can convert everything into A0s and A1s. And so we can factor out A0 times a bunch of terms, A1 times a bunch of terms, and with a little clever accounting on uh, these terms with A0, remember this was something that I covered in example four, so you can go back and look at that if you don't remember how that worked. This, la this series on the left turned into e to the x squared, the 3 halves x squared. Series on the right didn't really turn into anything good. We just had to leave it as a series. And so we got these two uh, independent solutions. And as usual, I converted the a0 and a1 into a c1 and c2. That's not really a very necessary step. You can leave it as a0 and a1 if you want. So uh, that wraps up our lecture on series solutions for differential equations. My name is Will Murray, and you're watching Educator.com. Thanks for joining us.